I had this in my head before, but I did see a guy on YouTube who mentioned this, and I wish I had his name because I want to shout him out, but I'm sorry, so forgive me, right? But it was compared to basically ag uh, assertiveness is controlled aggression, all right? And so think about it like this. When, when someone's aggressive, they're kind of a loose cannon. They might be the guy who picks a fight rather than is prepared to handle what comes his way. You know what I'm saying? He, he is a little more unstable, the aggressive person, all right? And he also does not know how... He lacks awareness as far as what lines not to cross, you know, and, and how to set proper boundaries or how to respect other people's boundaries as well. Whereas the man who is assertive stands strong in himself, is able to handle business. He is going to handle the challenge or the threat that comes his way, but he ain't going out there looking for threats. He ain't going out there looking for problems. For what? A wise man doesn't move like that. A wise man is focused on his purpose, his work, what he needs to be doing, his family, his loved ones, all that stuff. Not getting into trouble. You know what I'm saying? So you want to be assertive. You're also assertive in the sense of being able to take control when necessary, being able to lead when necessary. And I say when necessary because, listen, I believe as a man, it's not about always having to be the leader. A strong man knows how to take a step back. And let me give you an example that pops in my head. It's using, it's thinking about like Dwayne Wade and LeBron James, all right? When they came together, you could, you could argue there were two alpha males who led their teams to great heights all right. At that time, LeBron didn't win a championship. Dwayne did. Either way, they got together in that first season. They got to the finals, but the argument could be made that one of the conflicts they had was there was no assigned leader. There was no, okay, this is the top dog. When it's the last shot, it's in this person's hands. That's it. And that kind of threw things off. But in the next season, Dwayne Wade kind of took a step back and said, you know what, LeBron, this is your team. All right. It don't mean Dwayne Wade ain't wasn't still a man who led his own team. It didn't mean he wasn't strong. It meant that he was strong enough to recognize that the best course of action in this situation was to take a step back, let LeBron lead, and him kind of be the, the Batman, the Robin to his Batman, or however you want to phrase it. And then they win a championship. So as a man, we do have to understand when there's moments that we should step back, but we have to be prepared and ready to take the lead when necessary. And so assertiveness plays into all of that. And you definitely want to cultivate the ability to embrace being assertive in, in all aspects of your life. All right, so now before I get to number five, real quick, the book I did want to tell you about, He Who Finds a Wife. Get your copy of the book. You'll see it on the screen, but click the link on the, in the description or the comment section. It's helped a lot of men out there. Trust me, you're going to enjoy it. So get your copy, all right? So number five. <clears throat> is being a man of your word, all right? Do not be one of these guys who talk the talk but don't walk the walk. And if you can't walk it, don't talk it, all right? Nothing wrong with recognizing your limitations, nothing wrong with recognizing, hey, this is something I can, I can do or I can handle. And, and, and specifically how this translates into relationships is too many times it can be very frustrating for women to have to deal with a man who... They either have to constantly be on top of to get something done that you said you were going to do, all right, and then never actually do it, or, or it goes weeks without doing it. Now, if you are in a relationship or when you are dating a woman, what you want to learn how to do is don't just say, I'm going to do it to get her off your back, all right? If you honestly don't want to do it for whatever reason, I'd rather you say that than to tell her you're going to do it and not do it. That makes matters worse. All right. And now you look like you're not a man of your word and you start to look weak in her eyes. Also, if you know you need time, don't say I'm going to do it when you know damn well you're going to take two weeks to do it. If it's going to take you two weeks, say, hey, listen, I'm going to do it, but I'm going to need you to give me about a couple weeks. Now, I know that won't always play well. And she might complain about you having to wait two weeks or you her having to wait two weeks for this to get done. And some things may not be a two week wait situation. Right. But the point is. You want to lay out the guideline that's, that you can follow, all right? Don't, what is it? Don't, don't write a check your mouth can't cash or some, some crap. I don't know. Yeah, whatever it is, all right? Y'all know what I'm talking about. Bottom line is say what you mean, mean what you say, back up your words. If you say you're going to do it, do it. You say something's going to happen. E even when sometimes there's situations in life 
where let's say you, you told someone you're going to do them a favor. It could be woman, man, whoever. You say, oh, yeah, I'm going to help you out. And then they do some nonsense that makes you second guess if you should help them out. In my opinion, still do it. Still be a man of your word. Of course, there's some situations where there's going to be exceptions to the rule. But what I'm, I'm getting, what I'm trying to convey to you here is that don't be so easily swayed or find excuses to not stick to what you said. All right? Unless there's a really good reason for it, you need to follow through with what you're saying. So being a man of your word definitely is, is something that women want to see and, and is attractive in a man. And it makes them feel safer and more secure with you. It makes them feel like they can trust the words coming out of your mouth. And when you create that safety and, and that comfort in your relationship, you will unlock even greater parts of your woman that you can enjoy in this relationship. All right, so now we're on to number six. And the sixth masculine trait women love to see in men is the ability to be composed, composure, all right? So here's the thing, as a man, and, and unfortunately I have to say this, I, I'm seeing so many men nowadays being so emotionally reactive, all right? being so easily triggered. I'm seeing men going back and forth with women and insulting them. And I'm talking about like in comment sections and stuff like that and, and, and just arguing all day. with. It's like, yo, stop all that. Stop all that. Don't, don't let your emotions get the best of you. It does not mean you are not allowed to feel your emotions. I don't want y'all suppressing yourselves, but I want you to learn how to be composed. And if you need a moment, Take a moment, step aside and, and let things out. Cool, but don't let it cause you to become unstable. Don't allow it to cause you to now react before you process things. That's not a good look. And again, it's not even just about women. For you as a man, you can get yourself in a lot of trouble if you become too emotionally reactive. Think before you react. Help. pray before you react. Process, take a moment. And when you can show composure like that and, and you can not be so, again, just, just, just understand how to better approach things, that's going to, one, play well into you being able to lead better in a relationship, all right? It's going to help you make better decisions in a relationship. So, so again, you notice how this all connects to each other, all right? It's going to allow you to also not allow yourself to be swayed by her emotional moment. There's going to be times where she may get in her emotions. And it's not to excuse her being toxic in that moment or anything like that. But you cannot fall into the trap of now engaging in that same toxic energy. You know what I'm saying? Compose yourself. Chill. Take a deep breath. Process. And then handle things accordingly. All right? And, and set that example in any situation that you're dealing with. As well as the fact that understand that if, if there's a... If something's happening in life, let's say you are dating a woman or in a relationship and something happens to y'all that, that's kind of hard to deal with. If you as a man can't hold, can't exude composure or show composure, like it's almost like when, if you start acting frantic or panicking, that's only going to make her panic more. You know what I'm saying? Like you want to learn how to be the rock when the storm comes. You want to learn how, how to brace yourself and handle it so that you can come out of it stronger, better, and do what needs to be done. So learning how to compose yourself is definitely a masculine trait you want to cultivate. All right, now number seven is being ambitious and proactive, all right? Women do not like complacent men. Women do not like men who aren't trying to do anything with themselves. Now listen, I, I think we have to acknowledge that not everyone is very ambitious and there's different levels of ambition. So that's why I think even if you're not the most ambitious person, and what I mean by that is some guys are cool with a nice paying job, 401k, doing enough to get by, and that's it. And I don't want to sit there and say there's something wrong with that because there are women who will be okay with that. So if you're not the most ambitious guy, and I'm not going to tell you to be something that you're not, right? You still want to be a proactive guy. You still want to be a guy who doesn't have to always be told what to do. You want to be aware enough to recognize when things need to be done. Hell, if, if you're with your girl and you see she's having car problems, don't wait for her to ask you or tell you, yo, can you help me with my car? <laughs> like, 
Be a man and say, hey, I, I see you got an issue. Let me help you out. Let me, let me see what I can do here, all right? And it's not automatically you got to pay for it because that's a whole other discussion. But you're trying to help. You're essentially trying to take burdens off of her back as best as you can. And also, you want to be proactive in your own life. You know, again, there's nothing wrong with the fact that maybe you don't have aspirations to be a CEO or super rich or all these things. Hey, hey, that's not for everybody. That's fine, right? But you still want to seek progress in your life. Let the ambition be about how you can continue to grow as a man. All right. What other areas can I improve? So if I'm good with my job and my career, I don't need more than this. Okay, cool. But maybe you can still learn some new things. Maybe you can learn some new skills. I don't know why it's coming to my thing because I want to do it. Learn a new language. You know what I'm saying? Like learn other things that still make you, that increase your value in, in what you can execute and do in life. All right. And show that you're a man that's always looking to evolve and become better. I think that's still important even if you're someone who's just good at a certain level. Don't be so good that you don't look to get better overall. Hey, thank you for watching this video. Be sure to check this one out right here and I'll see you there. Relationships are the key to a successful life. But there's five areas that we have to be mindful of when it comes to relationships. There's relationship with God, relationship with ourselves, relationship with family and friends,